the mastering of the mind is, is basically the task that you are bringing, you are brought into creation to master your mind. Having full control of your thoughts allow you to dictate what your future is. Right? So, they say uh, an idle mind is the playground of Satan. Okay, so the first step in thought management is being able to control what you're thinking. Because if you understand that, what you think would dictate how you feel. All right? So if you are thinking of positive things, these positive things would have a particular biological reality in your bloodstream. Meaning that if it is that you are happy, you're thinking of happy stuff, oh boy, I had a wonderful day today. Yeah, man, I, I give thanks for life. Oh yes, man, I went by the river, look at the sun, it's beautiful. Right, these thoughts and these types of meditation, what it does now, it actually floods your physical structure, specifically with hormones that actually help to boost up your immune system. Right, so if it is that you have negative thoughts, these thoughts is what would actually shut down your immune system, raise your blood sugar levels, right? Increase your heart rate, right? All these different aspects. So that's why um, they say, well, if you're cooking this, this beautiful feast and the feast is, is right there on the table and you are, you, are you, are, you are just about to feast and then you get this bad news that says, well, well, something happened over there. What's going to happen? You know, even if you love whatever in front of you, that's your favorite feast but you got some bad news, what happens? Can you eat that? No, you can't eat it because the emotions, what it does now, the negative emotions, right, naturally just locks down the digestive system. So it is very important, and that's why we link directly um, um, gastric issues with stress. Um, fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome, a woman who, who has been abused, right? Maybe she was raped, she was molested, or her father never gave us no hugs, or she was in a, in a relationship where she was just spoken down upon, right? What happens is that this woman now, whenever she goes back into that time, that space, she, she recalls and says, well, I remember when it is that, oh, my, or, or she sees her father, she say, oh, this man that dealt with me horribly, da, 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 or, or if she was raped, and then she say, why, why, why did I go into that space? Da, 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 da. So the remembrance of that event what it brought, what it brings to her is a bad feeling. Now, if you understand that bad, the reason that you feel bad is because you produce particular biochemicals within your bloodstream that makes you feel bad, which are called the stress hormones, right? Very important. Okay, now, if it is that you are feeling good, then what would be produced is the feel-good hormones like it's the serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. So if you understand, well, look, a woman has been traumatized and she's always living in that trauma, right? Then she's going to get estrogen dominance and estrogen dominance mean is the female hormone. Then what's going to happen is that because the womb is very responsive to estrogen, she's going to grow fibroids in the womb, what they call leomyomas. Right? Because estrogen is what is responsible for the thickening of the uterus lining, the endometrium. Because of high levels of stress, right, then you have an increase in cortisol. Then from cortisol you have testosterone. So she'd also get masculinized. So you'll see that she has two or three strands of beard. Now, because from testosterone you get estrogen, then you have an increase again in estrogen. So the, the, the inner layer of the womb called the endometrium begins to grow on the outside of the womb then they say she has endometriosis. Why? It's because the womb is bombarded with estrogen. Now the pancreas is receptive to estrogen. That is why when a woman is, is pregnant, she develops what they call gestational diabetes. That's because just because she's pregnant, her, the level of estrogen is, is, is all the way up there, right? What happens is that the pancreas gets bombarded, it produces more insulin, she gets insulin resistance. During pregnancy, she's a diabetic. And after pregnancy, when the estrogen levels begin to go down, she begins to get normal. When a woman is pregnant, what happens to her breast? It gets big, right? Because estrogen stimulates glandular production. So if it is that during pregnancy you have high estrogen and your breast gets big, if it is that you are exposed artificially to estrogen, right? Or you are always stressed out, and because of your stress, you increase in your estrogen levels, that means that you are going to increase 
right, whatever mutations happening in your breast. So because of high levels of estrogen, you're going to have increased activity within the breast. So you could develop glandular carcinoma of the breast, right? So your mental state, that's why when someone comes with cancer, you're not like, say, well, drink this bush, you're going to have cancer, or drink this, or somebody is infertile, or somebody has polycystic ovarian syndrome, or she has fibroids, the first step is to put your mind in that right space. Because no matter what you drink, what you eat, you could go and do a surgery and take out the womb today, less than two months that same fibroids, or you're going to develop breast cancer, or you're going to develop some other type of aspect because you've not dealt with the cause. So the thoughts are instrumental. Same with the man. A man who has dealt with rejection, right? What it does now, if a man has always been rejected, da, 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 this man has a high propensity of developing prostate cancer, right? Because naturally, when a man turns 40, his estrogen levels begin to rise and his testosterone levels begin to, to go down, right? So just because of an increase in testosterone, his prostate begins to get bigger, right? Now, if he is exposed to synthetic estrogens, that means that he could actually develop prostate cancer at an earlier age. So understanding how your thoughts, that your thoughts is part of your emotional self that manifests itself through the endocrine system as hormones through your bloodstream that controls whether you are happy, whether you are sad, whether your heart beats fast, it beats slow, whether your stomach could function, whether you could defend yourself against the flu, right? All these things there are based upon what is circulating through your bloodstream, right? So it would actually, so if someone has fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome, breast cancer, she should abstain from, from soy products. Yeah, right? Because um, all these things, they are caused by estrogen dominance. And what you must understand is that apart from the food, you have what you call xenoestrogens. These are chemicals that act upon the physical structure like estrogen, like your parabens that you find that in your, in your beauty products, your, your, your talc and your baby powders and all your different things, your, your placental extracts, you know, in your makeups. You know, then you have your aluminum in your antiperspirants, right? Then you have your, your dioxins, then you have your, your atropines. Right, so atrazine, you know, so you have plenty of what you call endo endocrine disruptors that act upon the physical structure. So when it is that you might think it's only what you're eating and drinking, but what you're wearing, you know, what you, how you're thinking, what you clean your house with, you know, so the whole, all the environmental intoxicants is that one, 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 two, three, one, 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 from everything is what actually puts you at risk. So when it comes to, to dealing with these conditions, that's why we operate in a holistic approach, whereby it's a lifestyle change. So it's a complete lifestyle change to naturally eradicate these conditions. Remember that, that it's, it's a deliberate thing, you know. Okay? So some people want for a woman to be fertile. Some people don't want people to be fertile. Right, so if I am going to create a product, I'm going to create it that the woman is fertile. So from the, the position as a businessman that I'm coming from is to create a product that is economically viable, right, but yet still it is um, enhancing, bettering the life of people. Mm -hmm. But there are, there are, I mean, the majority, I mean, if you look at the majority of things, I mean, look at cigarettes, man. The, the box says it gives you cancer and, and you smoke it. You know, alcohol is an intoxicating liquor. You know, if you say that, oh, man, this is intoxicating, you know, what does that mean? It's poisonous, all right? So if something is toxic, it's poisonous. Yet still people buy it and people use it. So, and I mean, does, doesn't the people that do it know that it's intoxicating? Don't they know that um, cigarettes um, give cancer? So isn't it deliberate that you'd be selling something to someone that, you know, ultimately will actually kill them? So it is for you now as an individual, right, um, to make conscious decisions that is for your betterment, for your upliftment, and don't be suicidal, because then you become suicidal. So the person that smokes the, the cigarette is a suicidal person. Even the woman that sits down and thinks negatively all the time, she is suicidal. Why? Because she knows that the thoughts or the action would lead to her detriment, but she still repeats it over and over and over again. So there is a very, a very thin line between the, the person who just jumps up a, a, off a roof and shouts Geronimo and kills himself. You know, if, it, if, the, if it's a one-story building, it might take one second 
If it's a two-story building, it might take two seconds. If it's a hundred-story building, they might be going down all for a whole, almost a minute they're falling down, you know, and thinking all types of things before they eventually splatter. All right? So suicide is basically a, a tendency that many of our people are living with from our diabetics, you know, who know that what they are eating will kill them and they'll still eat it. You know, from the people who have high blood pressure, who knows that these things they will still kill them and they're still utilizing it. So we have to culture a spirit of self-love, overstanding. That's why the, the, the beginning point, the starting point is education. Man, know thyself and do yourself no harm. Well, let me hear you say, mountain, mountain, mountain.